It's the appreciator. That's me. I'm Brett, a.k.a. PQ River, here uh, talking at you about the kind of stuff that I uh, appreciate. And uh, one of the things that I very much appreciate, uh, and it, it used to be uh, coming up, I guess because everybody watched, you know, the same few TV channels. Yeah, I'm an old guy. Uh, before cable, I mean, it was really limited, and everybody watched the same things more or less. And it was a time when old movies, like those old... Today I say old movies, and people are thinking, oh, those 80s movies, they're really old. And they are. I forget that... In the 1960s, the 30s and 40s were just a few years back. Uh, Time. Time in and of itself is just a strange thing. However, in my day, I mean, just about everybody knew about the Marx Brothers. Uh, the, The Marx Brothers, Groucho, Harpo, Chico, and sometimes Zeppo, um... And I was never a fan of their later films, which were shown a lot more often. I know one time I remember their film, A Night in the Opera, was just simply considered one of the funniest movies ever made, and the stateroom scene was hilarious. But I was always drawn to their first several films, uh, Coconuts from 1929, one of the first talkies, and... uh, Animal Crackers, uh, Monkey Business. There were several they made before A Night at the Opera. A Night at the Opera, to me, is pretty much the last hurrah for them, whereas they kept making movies. uh, There's probably another five or six, and they only made about 10 or 11. I'm, and I'm I'm not using a reference here. Perhaps I should. Is this lazy or just like me trying to prove I have this incredible memory? I'm not sure which. But uh, if you have never seen a Marx Brothers film, uh, to just find one. I mean, uh, to any of the early ones, any of them before 1940. Uh, I'm not even sure that maybe Turner Classic Movies, I'm pretty sure uh, they or Ted Turner. Did Ted Turner sell his classic movies to TCM or does his uh, company still own the films themselves? And uh, it just... I I've one I have so many of these uh, channels now these pay I, I I have Netflix and Disney and Paramount and what they consider old movies once again I mean like wow we're going back to the 1970s now and yeah I'm, uh, I guess I'm grandpa and the 70s were the era that I was going to the movie theater all the time and seeing things, you know, like Woody Allen movies when he still made comedies. Um, those, it, the Woody Allen comedies are just, to, to forget all the controversy about what he may or might not have done and whoever, uh, let go of that. Woody Allen made some of the funniest movies you will ever see. I mean, movies like Take the Money and Run, his first feature, where he plays a hapless criminal, or Bananas, where he winds up recruited to try to overthrow some South American fictional government. And possibly my two favorites come after that. There is Sleeper, where uh, he is put into suspended animation and forgotten and brought back to life in this bizarre futuristic world that, I don't know, it still could very much predict uh, where we might wind up, uh, uh, especially uh, the robots doing tasks for us and all of that. And uh, after that, he made a satire of what was a staple, these kind of war and peace dramas that take place like a big, long, sprawling Russian novel. Uh, And his movie, Love and Death, uh, even if you haven't seen any of those, the hilarity is great. 
Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm familiar somewhat with all of the stuff that went down in, in later years. But if I'm not mistaken, he's still kicking out films. He was doing one a year for years and years, using some incredible actors and actresses. Um, I'm not sure if that's still going on. But all of his films are worth seeing, uh, as far as I can tell, even his serious dramatic ones. Um, it just has a great touch for writing and directing films, and every so often he performs in one. I mean, a more recent but still kind of old one that he performs in is uh, his existential black and white shadows and fog, where he is a man. It's sort of a Kafka-esque comedy where uh, society, everybody is kind of thinking on everybody else and just the satire. And it's nothing is heavy-handed in his later films. Yeah, in his earlier comedies, there can be some over-the-top stuff, but I think that was the style of the times more so than... uh, anything else and really early on he did a film called what's up tiger lily now what he did with this was he purchased the rights to a 1960s uh spy movie that was made in japan and he completely re-scripted the film and dubbed in some of the most hilarious dialogue uh he turned the plot into a search for the uh, secret egg salad recipe, if you will. Um, Just funny, funny stuff. And another comedian, uh, aside from the Marx Brothers, but from that same era, in fact, uh, he made some silent films, uh, W.C. Fields, who everybody did a W.C. Fields impression back in the day. And uh, today, I that just... Don't hear much about him. He was a, just a curmudgeonly guy who uh, traditionally didn't like little kids and dogs. Uh, just kind of a funny, drunken, mean old man. And almost any film that he made. Uh, just comedy gold of that sort, I have to add, because comedy is like very different. Uh, it's more edgy and uh, based on shocking people, uh, more sexual. I mean, there was the little sexual innuendos. Uh, I don't know how he got away with it, but uh, in the movie he made, The Bank Dick, he managed to get past the censors. Uh, in the film, there is a cafe which is just really a bar that he sneaks off to and drinks at. And it's called the Black Pussycat Cafe. And throughout the film, he refers to the uh, cafe at times as the Black Pussy, which, uh, again, the early 30s, uh, especially before 1934, uh, when they rolled in what they called the production code. Uh, it's called the pre-code era to film buffs. And th- the films were so much more adult. And after that, uh, there were just so many rules. Good had to triumph over evil. The movie kind of had to have a happy ending. And uh, those early talkies were unbridled of that. And it's some marvelous stuff. And some of the great actors and actresses of all time, uh, people like Spencer Tracy, uh, cut their teeth in this era. And again, Greta Garbo, who just, even if you don't care for that kind of drama, just watching a few minutes of her perform, you see the true meaning of the camera, really loving someone, and a film charisma of sorts that uh, is rare nowadays, although at the, the aforementioned in previous shows, Nick Cage, to me, has that, and uh, a few others. Arnold Schwarzenegger, whether I'm crazy about his movies or not, Jack Black, who, again, uh, some of his films, meh, but I'll watch Jack Black, even in a lousy film, just because he's so likable. In fact, uh, I saw... Uh, 
one of the Jumanji movies, uh, that one of the sequels, the one where Danny DeVito is, uh, th- th- this isn't the main plot, but Danny DeVito plays a character that when he gets drawn into a video game, he becomes The Rock. Uh, just that kind of thing. Uh, like I say, I am learning that Although I like to be pretentious and think I'm all foreign films and highbrow stuff, I can really enjoy uh, a lowbrow, goofy movie as much or more and recommend it uh, wholeheartedly without uh, any shame whatsoever. I mean, I used to kind of feel embarrassed to like this kind of thing. And in the end, it, it it's all the older I get, and this is something, there's nothing wrong with just plain, pure fun, and good times, and laughs, and easygoingness, and yeah, I just, for a while, anything that was like too commercial, or they sold out, uh, I wouldn't even be paying attention to the actual content, I would be just so... I don't know, pseudo-infuriated that somebody sold out and they're no longer sticking to their pure, uh, low-fi, low, I don't know, the low art thing uh, I like. And uh, it, it's fine. It, it really is. Uh, I, uh, and uh, let's switch gears uh, just a bit uh, while I recommend... Uh, an author. I've, I've talked about him, I'm sure, in the past, but uh, we're looking at everything fresh here. That also gives me a lot of topics I can dig back into. One of my favorite all-time writers uh, is a science fiction writer. And yeah, oh, lowbrow. But this is another example, although as science fiction stands, Philip K. Dick, it, it, he's the spoiler. Uh, he takes the genre in such a way and twists it and adds this almost hallucinogenic feel, probably because he was on a lot of hallucinogens at certain points in his career. But, uh, you know, he's familiar to, to people. Blade Runner is probably his most popular thing still, which was based on his novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Uh, but almost all of his novels, even his older pulpy ones, have this really neat and unique feel. And uh, reading him kind of spoiled a lot of uh, modern science fiction for me because he created so many tropes. Uh, I and many give him credit for that whole uh, false memory implants and living in alternate universes and alternate timelines. And I'm sure other writers before Philip K. Dick uh, wrote about that. But his novels, uh, notably, I would point out Ubik, which is short for ubiquitous. Uh, It just all about this alternate timeline thing and how this magic spray actually fixes the timeline you're in. Uh, Just check them out. And I'm saying just way too much. Um, And uh, I am just now, one, realizing, boy, uh, without even thinking about it, I have entered into, from middle age, I think the middle part is just about over, and I am old. That Maybe at the early phases, because genetically I could possibly live, what, another 30, 40 years if my health and brains and whatever hold out. Um, but uh, yeah, I at 63, I'm no longer, the hair is gray, uh, my step is a little slower, uh, and I, I, I noticed uh, that my memory was starting to get really weird, and uh, I, I was, a little personal note, I was a heavy 
weed smoker and i'm not just don't i'm not about to enter into a crew oh you should stop but uh i overdid it i really smoked and really liked smoking that stuff and did it for years and years almost on a constant basis and i was starting to realize that hey uh you know i just you know how sometimes you walk to the kitchen and you don't know what you walked there for. Um, I was having episodes like that and forgetting what I was doing just a little too often. And I had to see, is this the weed that I'm smoking all the time or am I becoming like Alzheimer's senile? And, And thank goodness I stopped and it was a cloudy, gradual process. I even think uh, I suffered from some COVID brain fog in the midst of that. Uh, but yeah, my brains are coming back. And this, this is nice. And I really, that, that I had so much help, especially from my uh, infamous and mysterious liminaries friends, who, of course, just visited from Europe and we did all kinds of cool stuff, um, to encourage me to hey maybe stop and 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 just stay stop don't just cut down i mean that was that was, oh i'll be fine i'll just cut down uh but did you, with me and my cutting down just gradually i the stuff i wouldn't say is physically addictive per se but i was so emotionally addicted to it and again deep appreciation to all of those who supported me and uh kind of helped me get through because that i've the, quitting cigarettes was harder in a lot of ways but once i was done i was done uh this i still like oh i miss it maybe i could just have a lip but no uh, not even a little, and uh, we'll see. But I am just about positive. In fact, uh, let let me just say that for the sake of it's better when I don't. I'm just the feel of sobriety is so nice. Uh, I never was a drinker uh, because uh, I have a historically bad liver because I had the misfortune of contracting hepatitis A as a little kid, and that, of course, the, the doctor would send me home thinking I had a virus until I turned yellow from jaundice. So I, I sustained some liver damage, and that probably saved my life because uh, I really couldn't drink very much, and now I can't drink at all. And all of that other heavier stuff is much more of a toll on your liver, so I just never got into the, the the druggy drugs i mean way back in the 80s god like 40 years ago i tried almost everything i even had a brief cocaine time uh but again uh, i'm just so glad that i was damaged to begin with and uh no more no more and uh, that that makes for i think a better me. I mean, what is being old? I mean, I mean, look at Jack LaLanne. He was 80-something, almost 90, and still a physical specimen. Um, so there's hope. Uh, I, I, maybe some yoga classes and uh, just being more active and out and about instead of hiding in my house with my little pipe and YouTubes. I, I mean, that it, I can still watch some YouTubes and keep up with things, and I actually have a better memory of everything I do, which that that's very helpful, because uh, repeating oneself and not even knowing that one is repeating oneself, that's that that's kind of lame, and uh, this has also led to me leading, and I think this is something we all it's it's okay. And it might be important for some of us to stay uh, informed of the news and politics. But I think especially during COVID, when we had all that extra time, you know, locked down and whatever, 
uh, a lot of people I know, just it became some sort of focus of their life. And uh, in the meantime, everything, I mean, things have always been left versus right, but it never in my life or experience, at least that I noticed, was so virulently put your foot down and don't take any of that uh, whatever the opposite side is saying and uh, uh, friends people who are friends for years and years suddenly aren't talking to one another because somebody said something or voted for someone or said something about the other person's candidate it's like no one be more civil when you're talking about the opposite side. Uh, you don't have to use those nasty adjectives in order to express yourself. Uh, a little civility and people, once again, remaining friends and talking through and where they disagree, saying, oh, well, I guess I disagree, and going on with life. Um, that's something I appreciate that I am being able to implement and uh just it's it does what difference does it make to any of our lives specifically which party is running the show uh i was just watching way too many youtubes where it, it was this guy no oh, they're taking over and it's gonna be um, who cares uh, I got podcasts to do and cool movies to watch and cool music to listen to and all sorts of fun things that uh, I don't need to be on this edge and like the, worried about the end of the world that when it was really about to dangerously end when we were fighting, you know, that, that, that whole fake scenario that we, Russia was going to nuke us back in the 70s. I think when the dust settled and everybody looked, if you're really honest with yourself, really, I don't think there was ever a genuine situation where anybody was going to nuke anyone. And I might be wrong, but that we made it through and nobody nuked anybody and all that worry and fuss and people who made that their whole world, oh, those Ruskies and their com Look, they have their country they're doing their thing and i'm not i'm staying out of the whole thing with russia now because i don't know i really don't know uh other than i'm glad i'm here and i'm not there uh and i feel for those who are stuck in that situation being in russia or the whole ukraine thing but uh, i appreciate that i have been able to step back I, I keep somewhat informed, but I don't need to have a firm opinion. I can be, I, I mean, some people are gender fluid. I want to be political fluid. I want to be able to talk to people who think this or people who think that. Put a few bits of my spin in there politely and but not try... That trying to change somebody's mind, number one, if you're calling them an idiot or the people that they support an idiot, you're not going to get anywhere. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, let, let, let's get back to some more positive things and fun things because that could go on forever. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I just appreciate that, yes, I am getting old and maybe, maybe, I don't know about wiser, but... Uh, making myself and my life a little lighter and a little easier to uh, be amongst my fellow friends and humans uh, on, a, on a better basis. And uh, let's, let's toss in, if we can, uh, I've, I've always been on and off, and not so much the modern quote-unquote product, but uh, I have an appreciation for the art of professional wrestling that line between real and fake the history of it um the characters and the personalities that uh, come up out of it i mean your hulk hogan's 
these, I mean, just about everybody at least knows about Hulk Hogan, uh, just this larger than life figure who, you know, he's just a regular guy probably in real life, but he was so huge in his day and he's made several comebacks. I think he's finally retired, but, uh, he's even older than me. You want to talk about old, but it, they keep going. A lot of those guys say uh, uh, this, most of you, at least older people, have at least heard of Ric Flair. And and personality-wise, he may be one of my favorite all-time wrestlers because he just was everywhere. And not so much in the market. I grew up in New York where the television was, it was uh, what, uh, what has become the WWE uh, World Wrestling Entertainment and Vic Mc, Vince Vic Vince McMahon, um, but I was there watching that stuff on what W O R T V as a kid sneaking it because my parents because we would imitate it uh, pretty much that they, they didn't forbid my brother and I from watching it but it was strongly discouraged and and probably a good idea because my younger brother and I uh, spent most of our youth uh, in some sort of uh, physical violent uh, altercations. You know, it was playing, but of course, whenever you're playing, it reaches a point where it, you cross over the line and uh, you're actually maybe not trying to kill one another, but to anybody else who's observing, uh, notably my Aunt Edie, uh, <laughs> that, that's a funny story in and of itself. It, it appeared to be very real. I remember we were going at it on the lawn and my aunt Edie just, she decided she was going to put an end to this and went after us with a broom. And I was the more docile and less, uh, temporary of the two. And my brother wasn't having any of it. As I recall, he grabbed the broom away from my Aunt Edie and chased her back into the house and put the broom through the door or something. I mean, just crazy stuff. Um, but professional wrestling, uh, there is a website called uh, Figure Four Online. And uh, part of what they do, they report on wrestling, but they also look at and uh, do reviews, uh, encapsulations of old wrestling shows dating back into the 80s. And they'll watch them every week and talk about them. And what some clever people on YouTube is, have done is take these and line them up in chronological order, usually by month. Uh, and just, it's like, a history of professional wrestling, and you can listen to it, uh, Raw, uh, the show that's still on, from the very beginning, every week. It's a little awkward finding the month sometimes, uh, but you can really listen to a complete chronology of all the storylines. I mean, let's face it, especially in modern times, um, professional wrestling is sort of a soap opera, but in sports and the storylines and the trivia and the personalities and the fact that none of it is really real. Even the stuff that appears to be real most of the time is all uh, kayfabe, which is what they uh, used to call uh, in wrestling. I mean, back before modern times, it was taboo for professional wrestlers to admit that this was fake. And uh, that, that, that that was called keeping kayfabe. And uh, now it's it's just, yeah, it's, 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 it's fake, but it's fun. And I guess there's still people, well, this is really real. And that's cool. 
Uh, to, believing that and feeling that is part of what they try to do and part of what has always made professional wrestling great. And uh, it used to be WCW versus WWE in the heyday. And uh, WCW, of course, went out of business. And then there was ECW with the extreme wrestling uh, and WWE bought that out. But now there are a couple of promotions new ones that are competing but i i just the modern stuff i i hit a certain line and it, it's it's just too much but uh, if that interests you dig around on youtube and, and and you can find all of this just historical wrestling stuff and old shows uh it's Oh, YouTube is just a marvelous thing, and that is something we can all appreciate. And uh, we're, we're, yeah, we're uh, hitting about the amount of time that I feel anyone should be subjected to this. So um, if you have any comments, you want to suggest topics, uh, what have you, you can uh, email me directly at kpqr.com. T-O-R-C at gmail.com. And until we meet again, uh, I say this all the time, and you really should always set the controls for the heart of the fun.